Hi, yes, I did do my hair. I'm not gonna keep you long because this book came out in like 2016. I feel like everyone who has read it has read it, but the scene is this, right? 2020, the pandemic is in full swing. We're in full lockdown. There's a reading craze. And every single book that people are talking about is a rom-com. You know, they're lighthearted, they're fun, they're easy to consume, take our mind off of things. And I read so many, but just like with any kind of genre, the more you read, the more you can predict what's gonna happen. And with rom-coms especially, there's kind of a formula that follows them. So I felt like I was just reading the same book over and over again. Cut to February of this year, and Sean McComb does a review of, I think he read like, five or six just like rom-coms straight through and one of them was The Hating Game by Sally Thorne and it's been sitting on my shelf literally for years now and I was just like maybe I should read that fucking thing. <laughs> this was like all the craze on Book Talk. One of my favorite YouTubers, um, Nikki Witt, this is like one of her favorite rom-coms of all time and I just don't know why I didn't pick it up. I think just like I said because there was just so many rom-coms and all of them were just starting to sound the same and it was predictable where I was just, I haven't touched a rom-com in, I think like When in Rome was like the last one that I read because I wanted to read book two and then I, that's a whole other thing. Anyways, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I loved this saying. It's probably not only like one of my new favorite rom-coms, but like one of my dare I say it I think this is one of my new favorite books we have Lucy Hutton and Joshua Templeman and they're both co-CEOs I believe at a publishing house and they do not get along the second they met um their companies they were both um working for independent publishing houses and then they both merged because they were both on the brink of collapsing because ebooks are the new thing right now but now there's this new position opening up and there's no need for like two of them anymore because they're just one big company. So they're both up to compete for this job position. And they just hate each other. They just butt heads. Like Josh and Lucy are complete opposites. She's very, you know, colorful. She's very friendly and warm and bubbly and she smiles at everybody where Josh is grumpy. He keeps to himself, he's very quiet, when he does speak he's very stern, he finds everybody's mistakes, and there's like grown men that are afraid of this man. And I liked the setting. I feel like usually with rom-coms it's usually some kind of like corny situation where like, oh no, like my car broke down and luckily it was in front of the, you know, mayor of the town and he has a spare bedroom and now like, you know, I'm staying here and we're in love. Like this was fun to read about and they are so competitive with each other and they just push each other and push each other and then all of a sudden we realize, they realize, um, do I love you? Like, is he kind of cute? Is she kind of cute? But, oh, it's done in that slow burn way where we appreciate the little, you know, hands brushing, we appreciate like, you know, someone sends her roses and we find out later in the book that it was him and they were red because she... this is mentioned more, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he sends her roses because he says like something rude to her and it hurts her feelings. So he sends her roses and it's an, like an anonymous card, but he sends her like lipstick red roses because Lucy wears lipstick, very red lipstick. But it's so cute and they start, you know, having ceasefires and they're just like hanging out with each other and realizing that they can sit in silence together and it's so cute. Like she'll go over and like Josh cooks for her and he's of course like a health freak and all of a sudden she goes over and there's ice cream in his fridge just in case he has any little late night visitors with a, a sweet tooth and it's just so cute. And oh, there's another um, fun little quirk to the story. Lucy grew up in... I think Rhode Island. She grew up on a strawberry farm and Lucy is a very petite woman. It's mentioned very, very, very often how little and tiny and petite and dainty Lucy is. So of course Josh is the opposite. He is a very tall broad man but he calls her shortcake. He calls her strawberry shortcake because she grew up on a strawberry farm and she's short. So he calls her shortcake and it's freaking cute. 
And later on, they like reintroduce themselves to each other after everything's happened. And he's like, oh, because of that, she's like, hi, I'm Lucy. I grew up on a strawberry farm. And he's like, oh, because of that, I'm going to call you Shortcake. And it'll be a dead giveaway that I love you. It was so cute. It was so cute. There is nothing that I love reading about more that makes my little heart ache than reading about why a person puts up these boundaries and why they allow the world to cast them in a certain light because it's easier for them. So this man who everyone just writes off as grumpy and stern and, you know, mean is just this shy, quiet man. And it was so sweet to read about, you know, why he is the way that he is, why he's put up these, you know, barriers and these boundaries. And it was just so cute. Another thing that happens that I completely forgot about because a lot of the books I've been reading recently are, you know, so they see each other's scars and it's like the, who did this to you? And like the, you know, touch her and, and we love those, we do. But what I love more is when she gets sick and they're still kind of, you know, bickering at this time, but she gets sick and he takes care of her in the sweetest way. Like he's fussing over her and he's like, just so sweet and so worried. And it's just such a treat to read about. There is also, and I give major props for this being the rom-com, um, there is no third act breakup in this. And I was shook as hell because the whole time I was like waiting for it to happen. I was like, there's going to be some kind of miscommunication. Like this little, you know, game is going to go sour. And it was just them navigating through this new turn of events. And I, I loved that. I loved this book. Was it perfect? No. Were there... <laughs> There are situations that would definitely not fly in an actual um, workspace and there were those kind of cringe moments where I was like, but very few and there were, uh, um, there were a couple lines too where I was just kind of like, um, that was, that was a little feral, but okay. But the no third act breakup, him taking care of her when she's sick and then her standing up to his dad, the man that pretty much like traumatized him into the you know emotionless stern person everyone like sees him as before they get to know him like Lucy did she stood up to him and I loved that she defended this man and he said thank you and I was so unwell she stood up for him they competed she fought like hell for that job position and I loved it I loved it. I read the book and then I watched the movie. The movie was very good. I really liked it. There was a couple parts where, you know, like they always like write stuff out for movies. Um, and they did go out of order a couple times and I was like, huh, oh, like no, because the way it's written in the book, like everything just like works out and pays off. And there was a couple things that they like did out of order and I was like, we are past this. We have already hashed this out and we are past Danny. Get Danny out of here. We do not want to see any more of Danny. We want Grumpy Josh. These goddamn Joshuas, every single rom-com, the like male like love interest is named Josh. And then every single small town romance, the guy's name is Noah. <laughs> I think I have said all I need to say. I know everyone has read this already, but if you are like me, and you have had The Hating Game by Sally Thorne sitting on your shelf for a hot minute, um, read it. I really, I really recommend. All right, I'm gonna go because my cat is just rubbing her little cheeks all over my tripod. Bye.